Hello, my name is David Mahalik. I'm an engineer here at Fort Defiance Industries. We're talking about the P2131 sterilizer maintenance operations, and in this video, we're going to talk about the ASCO valves, how to rebuild them, how to take them apart, what to look for when you're troubleshooting them. Before we get there, though, if you ever get a, a repair part, if you ever get a replacement part for a valve, we will send it to you like this with the swage lock already installed. So that you can see the fittings with the MPT, you know, they're already installed. So when you replace this, all you'll have to do is attach the swage lock fittings, tighten them a quarter turn, put your torque mark. So it'll be very easy. What you'll want to do is you'll always want to check for the flow arrows. You're going to want to install it just how it was, the flow arrow the correct way. These are directional valves, so if you if you install it the wrong way, it will not stop the flow. So the way the valve is designed is it only stops the flow if it's installed the correct way. So we got the valve body here, which is stainless steel. We got the actual solenoid part where the DIN connector attaches and the cable runs up to the electrical enclosure. And anytime the valve fires, the electricity runs through the solenoid and it actually pulls up a plunger, it pulls up a stem that allows the steam to flow through. So it's kind of how it works and I'll show you how to take it apart. All you're going to need is a flathead screwdriver and a one inch open, end, open ended wrench and it does help to to do this in a vise. If you pop these valves into a vise when you're inspecting them you can kind of clamp down on the body here as you disassemble it and take out the stem with the one inch wrench. I'm just going to do it on the tabletop here to demonstrate. So what you're going to do first is you're going to pry up on the red cap with a flathead screwdriver and pull up the red cap. Next you're going to take this plate off and it does help to press down a little bit. There's a little spring on the underside that if you press down on the green then you can pry up with a flathead and push it back and you'll see there's kind of a notch there. It's kind of a notch there that's holding it in. So when you press down and push back, you're pulling it out of the notch. So that's the plate you pull off. And the solenoid will slide right off. It just stays on there on the stem. The solenoid will slide right off. And then there's a little spring at the bottom that I was talking about. So this, the spring is what you were pressing down on. So pull the spring off. All right, now we can see the stem here. And again, helps to be in a vise. Just use this one inch wrench to work off the stem. All right, now you can pull it apart and talk about the internal components. So, for the valve body here, right there is the valve seat. So, with the direction of flow going this way, the steam would come through this side, it would come out those ports, it would go down through the seat and out. So that's why it's a directional valve. It's going to seal The higher the pressure on this left side, it's going to seal all the tighter. All the, the steam is going to press down on this plunger and seal tighter. If the pressure was on this side, though, it would actually lift the valve up because now it would be coming through that hole. It will lift the valve up. So it's a directional valve. So it will only seal in the direction of flow. We got a little white plastic washer, and that seals when you tighten the stem down, that seals on that face right there. So when you're doing a valve rebuild or a valve inspection, you're going to want to inspect that white washer and make sure it's free of gouges, any scratches. That's how you could get a leaky valve right there. So next you're going to inspect the seat for nicks. So that's that whole part right there. When the, when the valve seals, that Teflon right there seals on that face. 
So if there's any nicks there, it could leak. So just make sure it's smooth. There's no debris caught there. Maybe you have a little shaving or something caught there. That could also cause the valve to leak. So that's it for the body. And for the, the plunger, the stem, it's got a little ring, a spring, and then the Teflon seal. So that Teflon is what's sealing against the seat and the body. So again, if that had any nicks, scratches, if it's deteriorated, you would know that <clears throat> we would have to replace the valve. If this spring was bent or causing it to jam, this slides up and down in the stem body here. So if that spring is bent and causing it to jam open, that could also cause the valve to leak. So you're just going to want to inspect the spring and just make sure it's operating normally. And the ring here, this red ring should just be intact, should be able to slide smoothly. So that's the stem plunger. Now we got the the casing around the stem and this there's not really much to check. I mean you can check the threads. There's gonna be a little bit of anti seize on there so the valve doesn't seize up. But what you can do is you can insert the stem and just make sure it slides normally and everything looks looks good there. So that's it for the inspection. Again, if you see any any nicks or anything, we'll probably go ahead and just replace the valve so we can send you a new valve. So for reassembling, make sure the plunger is in there, inserted well, and is sliding freely. And you're just going to thread body and the plunger together, put it in a vise, tighten it down with that one inch wrench, then you're going to slide the spring back on. You're going to slide the solenoid, the silver side goes down towards the body. You're going to compress it a little bit. I like to kind of squeeze it in my hand. And then the little end of the notch, you're going to start with the large end. So you're going to put it on the large end. So I'm going to push down and slide forward. So push down and just slide it forward and then it'll kind of lock into place and you can kind of know it's locked you shouldn't be able to pull this off so it's locked in place lastly put the red cap on all right so that's it for the ASCO solenoid valve replacement inspection again if you're you're having any symptoms that you think the valve's leaking you can take it apart and inspect it and you can also one last thing you can do is you can check that the valve is actually operating. If, if this valve is engaged during a cycle, you can feel it and it should vibrate a little bit. It should have like a low vibration. So that can be another troubleshooting technique that you can use. All right, so that's it for the ASCO valves. Thank you.